Let's just focus on to this now, the Commission dealing with pandemics and international law of the Institute of International Law hopes to clarify global laws surrounding COVID-19. The organization is devoted to studying and developing international law. Among other things, it will focus on whether a country can be held responsible for consequences of outbreaks. Dira Tladi, a professor of international law who recently joined the Institute, joins us now via Skype. Thank you very much uh, for your time and congratulations uh, on the work that you are about to embark on. Perhaps you've just given highlights of the work of the organization, but if you can give us greater detail as to what exactly it is that it is mandated to do. Yeah, so the Institute, um, oh, and thank you very much for having me. Um, so the Institute to Draw is, uh, um, is an organization that is dedicated towards um, the codification and progressive development of international law. Um, so it really is um, an organization that looks at state practice um, and tries to distill from all of the state practice um, some kinds of trends in order to determine whether there are rules of custom international law um, um, that may be applicable that perhaps haven't been codified in treaty law and then it might propose, for example, a treaty in that respect. It sounds like quite uh, a task. How exactly is this done? So normally what we would do is we would appoint a, a, a rapporteur, um, a special rapporteur who would lead a project. And, and the function of that special rapporteur is really to sort of um, look through um, a series of acts by states that regulates a particular matter, and these acts could be anything, so legislation, um, treaties adopted, um, um, statements, and from this we, um, the special rapporteur would then um, decipher what we would call state practice, and international law is essentially based on state practice. Um, on the basis of this, the special rapporteur would present a report. Um, on this particular topic, there's already been uh, two reports that have been presented on which we've had online debates. Now, normally we would have these debates sort of um, in person, but we've had online debates. Um, and on the basis of these debates, we would then propose what we call draft articles, which are um, the basis for treaty text, if you like. Um, so, um, so yeah, as I said, we've had uh, two reports at this point. Um, and I expect that there'd be many more reports coming on this particular topic. On a very high level, these two reports that have been presented, uh, what exactly, if you can give us some of the salient points that came out of them? So the first really major issue is um, what exactly would be the scope um, of the function um, of this particular commission of the Institute. Um, there are a number of issues that we could look at, and so um, there's a legitimate question about what are the appropriate aspects of pandemics that we should look at and what are the aspects that we ought not to look at. Um, and so, for example, you mentioned in your introduction the question of state responsibility. And so there's a real question about whether or not it would be appropriate for um, this commission to look at the question of responsibility. One issue on which there seems to be a great deal of agreement that um, the commission ought to look at uh, is the question of the impact of commission uh, of pandemics on the respect for fundamental human rights. And so we have seen, for example, in our own country um, that um, we, the government has had to adopt um, some regulations that have impacted on human rights. And so the question is, what is the limit? To what extent can these um, fundamental human rights um, be limited? For example, freedom of expression. So we've seen there's a regulation about um, um, false news, for example, right? So there's a question mark about whether or not this is consistent with the right to freedom of expression. Uh, the extent to which um, the state in enforcing um, the lockdown regulations, what are the limitations? Um, uh, can they use force? What is the extent of the force that can be used? So those are the kinds of questions on which there's at least a fair degree of consensus within the commission that we ought to look at. There are, as I said, other issues on which there isn't consensus. Should we look at questions of state responsibility? Some members say, well, that's highly political. Um, and some members say, well, it will be impossible to sort of show the necessary nexus. And so perhaps the commission ought not to look at those kinds of issues. But that's, so those are questions that we're still looking at at this point. To your point, um, does the footprint extend onto the continent currently with the World Health Organization? There's a school of thought that believes, well, they do give guidelines in terms of the regulation but each, yeah. each country rather on the continent uses its own discretion in terms of the circumstances that they have. 
Yeah. And so you're right. I mean, there are these uh, World Health Organization um, health regulations, um, but these health regulations don't cover all aspects of international law, right? And so, for example, they cover things like um, the obligations on states to inform the World Health Organization um, when there are certain outbreaks. Um, they cover these more procedural aspects, but there are substantive questions that aren't covered, which are essentially left up to states. Um, to regulate, and so that's really the kinds of things that we'll be looking at. Our function would not be to try to amend or even to interpret um, the World Health Organization's health regulations, um, but really to sort of see how these health regulations fit in with other aspects of law. And all the best uh, in your new journey. Professor Diretladi is a professor of international law.